Hey guys, welcome back. This is day seven. Yes, I'm wearing the same thing I was wearing in the day six video. Um, it's my pajamas, but um, today my hair might be a little crazy because we were outside doing our maternity photos today. So it was a little bit windy. But anyway, um, today is day seven and day seven is love believes the best. And it says... Love please all things, hopes all things. 1 Corinthians 13, 7. In the deep and private quarters of the heart, there is a room. It's called the appreciation room. It's where your thoughts go when you encounter positive and encouraging things about your spouse. And ever so often, you enjoy visiting this special place. On the walls are written kind words and phrases describing the good attributes of your mate. These may include characteristics like honest and intelligent, or phrases like hard worker, wonderful cook, or beautiful eyes. They are things that you discovered about your husband or wife that have embedded themselves into your memory. When you think about these things, your appreciation for your spouse begins to increase. In fact, the more time you spend meditating on these positive attributes, the more grateful you are with your mate. Most things in the appreciation room were likely written in the initial stages of relationship. You could summarize them as things you liked and respected about your loved one. Each inscription was true, honorable, and good. And you spent a great deal of time dwelling on them in this room before you were married. <laughs> But you may have found that you don't visit this special room as often as you did. That's because there's another competing room nearby. Down another dark corridor of your heart lies the depreciation room. And sadly, you visit there as well. On its walls are written the things that bother and irritate you most about your spouse. The play, you place the, these words and opinions there. Out of frustration, hurt feelings, and disappointment of unmet expectations, this room is lined with weaknesses of failures of your husband or wife. Their bad habits, hurtful words, and poor decisions are written in large letters that cover the walls from one end to the other. If you stay in this room long enough, you get depressed and start expressing things like, My wife is so selfish. Or my husband can be such a jerk. Or maybe I think I married the wrong person. Some people write very hateful things in this room where tell-all statements are rehearsed for the next argument. And mostly injury, injuries fester here, adding more scathing remarks in the walls. It's more ammunition is keeping for the next big fight and bitterness, bitterness is allowed to spread like a disease. People fall out, fall out of love here. But know this, spending time in the depre depreciation room kills marriages. Divorces are plotted in this room and violent plans are schemed. The more time you spend in this place, the more your heart devalues your spouse. It begins the moment you walk in the door and your care for them lessens with every second that ticks by. You may say, but these things are true. Yes, but so are the things in the appreciation room. Everyone fails and has areas that need growth. Everyone has all unresolved issues, hurts, and personal baggage. This is a sad aspect of being human. We have all sinned. But we possess this unfortunate tendency to downplay our own negative attributes while putting our partner's failures under a magnifying glass. Let's get down to the real issue here. Love knows about the depreation room and does not live in denial that it exists. But love chooses not to live there. And I underlined that and I said I love this. And I'm going to say it again because I like it so much. Love knows about the depre depre depreciation room and does not live in denial that it exists. But love chooses not to live there. You must decide to stop running to this room and linger there after every frustrating event in your relationship. It does you no good and drains the joy out of your marriage. 
Love chooses to believe the best about people. It gives them the benefit of the doubt. It refuses to fill in the unknowns with negative assumptions. And when our worst hopes are proven to be true, love makes every effort to deal with them and move forward. As much as possible, love focuses on the positive. It's time to start thinking differently. It's time to let love lead your thoughts and your focus. The only reason you should glance in the door of the depreciation room is to know how to pray for your spouse. And I underlined that and I'm going to read it again. The only reason you should glance in the door of the depreciation room is to know how to pray for your spouse. I like that. And the only reason you should ever go in this room is to write covered in love. And I underlined covered in love too. In huge letters across the walls. It's time to move into the appreciation room to settle down and make it in, in your home. As you choose to meditate on the positives, you will learn that many more wonderful character qualities could be written across the walls. Your spouse is a living, breathing, endless look, book to be read. Dreams and hopes have yet to be realized. Talents and abilities may be discovered like a hidden treasure, but the choice to explore them starts with a decision by you. You must develop the habit of reining in your negative thoughts and focusing on the positive attributes of your mate. This is a crucial step as you learn to lead your heart to truly love your spouse. It's a decision that you make whether they deserve it or not. Okay, so today's dare said, for today's dare, get two sheets of paper on the first one, spend a few minutes writing out positive things about your spouse. Do, do the same with the negative things. On the second sheet, place both sheets in a secret place for, for another day. There is a different purpose and plan for each. At some point during the remainder of the day, pick a positive attribute from the first list and thank your spouse for demonstrating the characteristic. Um, since I went ahead and did it, and I'm not going to read you the negative because, well, that's not fair to David. <laughs> and, um, it's just something I don't want to look back on and because that's not what makes him. I mean, I guess it does. Everybody, everybody has their negatives, but we want to focus on the positives. And so I just want to kind of share with you some of the positives that I see. And it, it is. He loves me and James, loves our animals. He's a hard worker. He works two jobs so I can be a stay-at-home mom and wife. Works hard even though he has pain. He's a Christian and he has a great smile. That's one of the first things I noticed about him when we first met on our first date. He opened the door and he had a big smile on his face and I really liked it. Um, he's a family man, shows affection, doesn't hold grudges, he's loyal doesn't do drugs. He's never been to jail. He's trustworthy, knowledgeable, truthful, leader of the family, provider, appreciative, understanding or tries his best to understand me. Uh, um, he's a great husband and a great father. He's compassionate, forgives, respectful, selfless, faithful, faithful, kind, gentle, accepts me for who I am. Supportive. He's a hands-on dad. Always, he allows me to follow my dreams. Social. He has a good laugh and he's easy to talk to. And in today's dare, it says you're supposed to, at some point during the remainder day, pick a positive attribute from the first list and thank your spouse for demonstrating this characteristic. And today I just told him, um, thank you for loving me and I told him thank you for being a trooper today when we were out doing um, our maternity photos because he could have been very negative about it especially since it was really cold <coughs> and, and very windy and and he uh, we had to do some like cute little poses that could be painful for him and uh, James was there you know and he he was cold, so I mean, it could have just been 
not disaster, but not gone so well. But it went really well. So I thanked him for that. And he's just like, oh, you're welcome. <laughs> so um, that is for day seven. All right, I'll see y'all for day eight. Oh yeah, and there's one more thing that I wanted to add in. I told you before that I've um, last year, this time last year, I started this, but I didn't finish it. I did a few days, but um, I read what I wrote in it last time, and I wanted to share it with you because I think it's something that I should be doing. And I wrote, I am going to work on when I start thinking of something negative about David. I'll think of one of his positives and I think that's a good thing that everybody should do and everybody should try when you start getting those negative thoughts in your head you need to switch your mind and start thinking of his their positives so I just wanted to share that with you okay I'll see y'all tomorrow hi guys okay so day eight and it is love is not jealous Love is as strong as death. Its jealousy unyielding is the grave. It burns like blazing fire. And that's in Song of Solomon 8, 6. I love, I'll put. Sorry, my little co-host wanted to join me. Okay. Jealousy is one of the strongest drives known to man. It comes from the root word for zeal and means to burn with intense fire. The scripture pointedly says... Wrath is fierce and anger is a flood, but who can stand before jealousy? That's in Proverbs 27, 4. There are actually two forms of a legitimate jealousy based on love. And an and a an legitimate jealousy based on in, envy. And I have felt this before, but not from David. Um but an ex that, that cheated on me a whole whole lot so I have felt this before a legitimate jealousy sparks when someone you love who belongs to you turns his or her heart away and replaces you with someone else if a wife has an affair and gives herself to another person her husband must have a justified jealous anger problem uh, because of his love for her and that's what I felt when my ex that I was with for a while cheat on me several times I bought this. okay go get it and let's rinse it off he is longing to have, have back to what is off. rightfully his there yeah. you <clears throat> go thank you the Bible describes God as having this kind of righteous jealousy for his people it's not that he's envious of us Wishing he had what we have, since he already owns everything. Everything. It's that he deeply longs for us, desiring yeah. for us to keep him on as his first love. He knows that he alone is our greatest hope and will satisfy our deepest needs. So he doesn't want us to let anything take precedence over him in our hearts. The Bible warns us not to worship anything but Him because the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. And it's in Deuteronomy 4.24. With this concept established, we will now shift our focus to the illegitimate kind of jealousy that stands in opposition to love. The one rooted in selfishness. I said earlier that that's the one I had when my ex... Um, cheat on me, but that's actually le a legitimate a jealousy. This is illegitimate, illegitimate, illegitimate. I can't say the word. Um, I l l e g i t i m a t e <laughs> kind of jealousy that stands in opposition, James, to love. I hope you can pay attention to this with, <laughs> with this little crazy man. Um, the one rooted in selfishness. Thanks. This is serious business. This is serious business. To be jealous of someone, to be moved with envy. Do you struggle with being jealous of others? Your friend is more popular, so you feel hatred towards her. Your coworker gets the promotion, so you can't sleep that night. 
He may have done nothing wrong, but you've become bitter because of the success. It has been said that people will celebrate your level of success as long as it does not exceed theirs. And I wrote, it's easy for me to get jealous of other people on like YouTube and Instagram and Facebook for what they have or how many followers they have and etc. So I just, yeah, it's easy for me to do that. <laughs> so um, I always have to tell myself that one, it's probably not completely like what they have and how perfect their home is probably isn't what it really seems like. They probably just have like one clean area in their house and that's where they're recording or one perfect little area of the house and the rest of the house might be destroyed. I don't know. Or they could all just be perfect houses, but they might be dealing with something else. So that's what I keep telling myself that nobody's perfect. And the followers, follower things, um, how many followers people have, well, that just comes with time and a little luck too. So I just have to keep telling myself that. Um, jealousy is a common struggle. It's sparked with someone else's upstages you and gets something you want. This can be very painful, depending upon how selfish you are. Instead of congratulating them, you fume in anger and think ill of them. If you're not careful, jealousy slithers like a viper into your heart and strikes your motivations and your relationships. It can poison you from living the life of love God intended. If you don't diffuse your anger by learning to love others, you may eventually begin plotting against them. The Bible says that envy leads to fighting, quarreling, and even evil things. And that's in James 3, 16, 4, 1 through 2. There is a string of violent jealousy seen, seen throughout scripture. It caused the first murder when Cain despised God's acceptance of his brother's offering. Sarah sent away her handmaiden because Hagar could bear children while Sarah could not. Joseph's brother discovered he was their favorite, father's favorite, so they threw him into a pit and sold him as a slave. Jesus was more loving, powerful, and popular than the chief priests, so they envied him and plotted his betrayal and crucifixion. You don't usually get jealous of disconnected strangers. The ones you are tempted to be jealous of are primarily in the same arena as you. They work in your office, play in your league, run in your circles, or live in your house. Yes, if you aren't careful, je jealousy can be also inf infect your marriage. When you're married, you were given the role of becoming your spouse's biggest cheerleader and captain of his or her fan club. Both of you become one in life and were to share in enjoyment of the other. But selfishness rules any good thing happening to one, only one of you, can be a catalyst for envy rather than congratulations. He may be enjoying golf on the weekend while she stays home cleaning the house. He boasts to her about shooting a great score and she feels like shooting him. Ooh. Or perhaps she is constantly invited to go out with friends while he's left at home with the dog. If he's not careful, he can resent her popularity, which she resents his loyalty to the dog. Because love is not selfish and puts others first, it refuses to let jealousy in. And I wrote, I need to work on this, especially those in, on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. I may not love these people, but I do need to be happy for them. I'm not ever jealous of David. Maybe his friends, because... Because I only... Maybe I get jealous of his friends, some because I only have, like, one friend I've had for, like, a really long time. I'm not really close to any other... People I went to like high school or college with. I'm only like kind of close to like one girl that I grew up with like my whole life. And David has um, quite a few friends that he's had since high school, and they're like brothers. Especially there's two. Especially I don't I don't want to say I'm really jealous of them, but I mean it kind of like stinks, you know. So. <laughs> It leads you to celebrate the successes of your spouse rather than re um, resenting them. 
A loving husband doesn't mind his wife being better at something, having more fun, or getting more applause. He need, he sees her as completing him, not competing with him. When he receives praise, he publicly pra thanks her for support and aiding his own success. He refuses to brag in such a way that may cause her to resent him. A loving wife will be first to cheer for her man when he wins. She does not compare her weaknesses or his strengths. She throws a celebration, not a pity party. It's time to love humility. It's time to let love, humility, and gratefulness destroy any jealousy that springs up in your heart. It's time to let your make success draw you closer together and give you greater opportunities to start the music and throw the confetti. As I was reading that, I started thinking, I have more than one friend. <laughs> um, I'm just saying that friends he's had for a long time. He has a, a, a few of them. And I, I, I have more than one friend, but um, they're, they've actually, actually kind of came out from uh, from his friends. It's kind of his friends' wives and girlfriends and stuff like that. But, uh, um, so I don't want people to think, oh, she didn't have any friends. I do have friends. Anyway, back to this thing. I just had to put that in there. Um, Determined to become your spouse. Oh, oh, this is today's dare. Determined to become your spouse's biggest fan and reject any thoughts of jealousy. To help you set your heart on your spouse and focus on their achievements, take yesterday's list of negative attributes to, and discreetly burn it. Then share with your spouse how glad you are about success of blessing he or she recently enjoyed. And um, I, we are going to burn... I have the list right here of, his, of my negatives, and we are going to burn it. I'm going to show you that. But um, I haven't really said anything. I haven't told David about um, congratulating on him on success. Um, but I do want to tell you a little story. Or I, I was in it from last time I did this book um, a year ago. I'm still going to do it when David has success in his job, but this is one that really stood out to me, and this is what I wrote. Some positive experiences is when David does well at work. Someone, someone wrote in how much he helped them, and he got put an email that sent to everywhere, all the, the whole company, and it talked about how uh, great of a job he did. I showed my pride and encouragement by copying the picture it was a picture of him and it explained what he did uh, that was so great when helping this person. And I um, copied the picture on my phone and I was gushing all about it. Just telling him how great that was. And um, I think that made him feel good. And I brought it up several times after that to you know, the family and friends about how great a job he did and with helping somebody and how it got put in an email that went to every the whole company. And so I was really, very proud of him. I need to bring that up to him again. And, and I'll definitely be doing that in the future. Because I know David will be doing that again. He'll be definitely doing more great things in his job. Both jobs. He has two jobs so I can stay home. But he has a stay home mom. And so I'll definitely be gushing over that. Alright, let's go burn these neg <laughs> negative attributes of what I think about David. Okay, so I am going to burn this list in the sink. My sink is clean. I just cleaned it and it, it's just old and has stains in it. But, um, I just had to throw that in there. Make myself, make myself feel better. But these are the negative things that I have thought about David and now I'm going to burn them. So I will officially be, never think of them again, or at least try not to. And here we go. Okay, here we go. Do it in the sink. I feel like that's the safer place to do this. I feel like that maybe I should have started, like, open the door or window. <laughs> Hope the fire alarm doesn't go off. But there it goes. Bye-bye, negative thoughts. I gotta go open the door. Hold on. Okay. I don't know if it's gonna burn now because I put water on it. You still outside. Oh, it went out. Okay, I wrapped this in um, a paper towel, a semi-wet paper towel. Nope, 
There we go. The devil doesn't want me to forget the negatives. This is okay. It's okay. Okay, that's good. Thank you, David. Or James. The devil doesn't want me to forget the negatives about David, but here we go. It's just me. Daddy's gone and he's coming back. Yes, Daddy's at work. He'll be back. And, and there they go. Hopefully mm -hmm. it's going to get the um, paper too since it's wet. Yeah. And whoa! You just turn the file on? Turn yep. the... I have to do it again. No. I don't turn the fire on. Whoa! I tried, James. Damn! Hey, let's he come in! He comes 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 in! Well. He's coming back outside. He's going back outside. Come on, devil. Let me do this. Get rid of those negative thoughts. Okay, so that didn't go exactly as planned because I was scared that the fire alarm was going to go off. So I put water on it and now it won't burn. <laughs> The devil really, the really, really doesn't want me to get rid of these negative thoughts, so David. But we're going to do it. I'm going to, instead of burning it, I'm just going to rip it up. No more negative thoughts. I'm going to put it in the trash. And not think of these ever again. When they tried to come up into my memory want to replace it with a positive thought about David. Make it as small as I can. And it was partially burnt. Okay. So here's the mess that I had left over. I mean, I couldn't read that anyway, if I tried. But, um... Yes, I'm going to end this video right here. Mommy, well, we don't want all one cookie and I got the old one. Okay. I got some cookies. Okay. Well, all right, I'm going to end this video here. And if you haven't seen the other videos in this challenge, make sure you go and watch those. And keep an eye out for the upcoming ones. Alright, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you'll never miss one of our videos. Alright, until next time. Bye.